Hi there, I'm Java Jim, and today we have Sheeler, one of our Bianca customers, who has no experience on making espresso, uh, learning on how to use the Bianca, from taking it out of the box, to setting it up, and then to making espresso and steaming milk for cappuccino. So we have the Bianca right here in front of us. If you want to scoot over here and you want to say how hi to her. How sad is that, that I don't know how to take something out of the box. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty bad start. But. Uh, the Bianca is going to arrive in a box similar to this with two straps uh, with uh, packaging uh, that's on the inside as well as uh, a little extra cardboard here. Just need a pair of scissors or a knife. I'm not saying take it's not a big coffee pot, but that box is as big as I am. <laughs> And just open the straps off, take the two pieces of cardboard off, and then as far as the tape, you can use scissors or a knife. And you are going to lift the machine out of the box, right? It, just don't scratch my Bianca. I, you be careful because, while you're doing that. Because, and then I'll, because I'll, basically I, I heard that you can bench about 400 pounds. It's true. I knew it was true. I just knew it. But you, 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 you have to convert. <laughs> I have to, to convert. Kilos. <laughs> kilos. <laughs> So if you uh, narrow in on here, after uh, you open the top cover, uh, you'll see the accessory box, which will be going over. You'll see some foam that's in here. This makes, this makes a great cushion while you're driving. You know, you can put this on your seat, it's you know, great. get a little cushion there. I feel like this is the price of right. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have now, Java Jim? <laughs> and then a piece of foam that's in the front of the machine. And this is a virgin machine, hasn't been touched or opened or tested yet. So well, you we're going to give it a drink real you're, you're soon. Gonna, you're going to see, yes. And uh, basically, there's two pieces of foam on the bottom, and the cord is also on the bottom below the machine. Uh, gripping uh, the machine uh, is usually a good idea to grab from the back of the tank, which I am, and mm -hmm. then also either the steam uh, knob or the group head. So oh, really? So you can grab it by those knobs? So you can grab it, ah. pull it out. And wow, sometimes, that's gorgeous. Sometimes, thank you. Sometimes the back foam will come out. Typically, the front foam will come out. So we'll take that off. Put that back in the box. The only reason I came to make sure that you don't hurt my machine. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll see the cord, uh, the packaging material. If you can save it, it is a good idea to save it in case the machine ever needs to be transported uh, in a car, in a truck. In case you uh, decide not, to leave your husband, ladies, and you want to take the machine with you while they're at work. This is a great idea. <laughs> um, Always thinking ahead. Yes, but the machine cannot be UPS or FedEx, so you can't use this packaging because they will damage the machine. Uh, uh -huh. The machine's pretty heavy. It's got a, a lot of internal components that can shift during shipping. So it does kind of have to ship. We ship them out on pallets, but never UPS and FedEx uh, common carrier with the little trucks. So, uh, but it's good to keep this box if possible. And I know some people like New York City with smaller uh, residences, it's impossible to do that. But if you can't keep it, it's a good idea, especially if you're moving and you put the machine back in the box. You know, you rent a storage bin, you put your mm -hmm. empty box in there. Right. It only caught, so go ahead. <laughs> so taking the bag off, just easy as that. This is prettier than my whole kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, there is tape that's on the drip tray to hold it secure while it's shipping, so that can come off. So before you become a barista, you must become a package specialist. Uh, yes, a packaging specialist or unpackaging specialist. Uh, Lilith actually put some foam here, so uh, there's no scratching involved in case the wands move. Did you just Ooh, step on my foot? I did. I'm so sorry. Oh. You want to try that again? Yeah, please. All right. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the foam can just be slid off. Again, that's to prevent scratching. And this is basically the setup of the machine right here. Um, uh, you have all these components here. We're going to go next also to the to the box, uh, accessory box. This cord plugs in on the back. Okay, it does need a little excessive force to push it in to make a very good and tight connection. So just make sure that you tighten it all right. uh, or push it in very well. If you're going to move the tank from one side to the other, you do have to unplug it because this goes in through a porthole that's at the bottom of the reservoir. So you'll see there's a porthole oh, yes, down I there. See it. Uh, so you do have to unplug it if you're going to move the reservoir. The reservoir in here is in the back. As you could see, it says front. You know what that means, right? Thank God. 
I don't know how I would have done. I wouldn't would have known. And you want to know something? On the prototype, it doesn't say front. So it's possible to put the tank in backwards. I'm the other way that you know is if you, look at, the, if you look at the porthole right here on the bottom, uh, it's not centered. It's off center and it's more to this side. Okay, so, and the way that they put these uh, prongs here, if you look, these are to the outer, these are to the inner. So when it sits in, it can really only sit in one way. Okay, so we'll, uh, next, uh, next we'll, we'll put in the water filter. Um, if you have hard water or soft water, we do. it's still good to put the water filter on. We have hard water. Very hard. Water filter's right here. It's good for 70 liters. And we're going to install this. Uh, but before we do, can you figure out what these numbers are for? Uh, let's see. So it goes with, from what? One, two. You need my glasses? I do. I can't <laughs> see without them, but I'm trying to pretend that I'm looking at the numbers. So it goes through one through 28, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking, okay. Maybe 28 one, ounces? 28, 28 days, days, 28 ounces, 28 gallons. What do you think? Uh, Any idea? No. With your level, 28 of, would level, mean level of expertise. Only, only, only the month of February <laughs> can you make coffee. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking. Uh, how true but untrue. Okay. Um, what this really means is 28 tankfuls before you recharge the, ah. the cartridge. Now this... Uh, so you have to move it every time you do it? Or every time you fill the you reservoir. Count and then you're... Every time you, you fill the reservoir, it? move it up one, and then once you hit the 28, you know it's time to recharge. You know how to recharge this? I don't know. Are you, you going to show no, me? You don't know? No, I'm not going to show you. Oh, well then I'll just have I'll to read the book. I'll explain it though. I'll explain it. So... As, as you talk, I could be reading the book and I'd be a step ahead You know how to open a bag? Not even that. Uh, okay. I so do, you just use your fingers. Do you want me to use my teeth on it? <laughs> they might come out. I'm very old. Be, uh, <laughs> um, so you have the water softening cartridge. This has resins inside. And you hear the resins? I hear them. There's little gold resins. Resonant resins. Yes. So what happens is they grab the calcium and magnesium out of the water. Once they grab the calcium magnesium, it's only good for 70 liters of water passing through. Now, it could be less than 70 liters depending on how hard your water is. So if your water is like really hard, you might only go 30 liters or 40 liters. What we recommend recharging this is twice a month. And what does recharge mean? Recharge means taking a glass of water, tall glass, cold water, putting in some salt. Leaching it out. Putting it in, sitting it in a salt water bath for 20 minutes. Okay, and what, what happens is when the salt reacts with the resins, it releases the magnesium and the calcium. After a 20 minute bath, turn it upside down, run cold water for five minutes, so all the, all the magnesium and calcium get flushed out. Okay, so it's really important to flush out the magnesium and the calcium. How many times can you do that? You can do that three, four times a month, twice a month, good question. Uh, but the cartridge should be replaced once a year. Okay. So once a year. So if your water's hard, it's safer to do it once a week. If your water's not as hard, you can get away with once a month. But you really need to know your water hardness. In general, we say twice a month now. Now, why do you want to do this? You want to protect the machine from magnesium and calcium. Magnesium and calcium causes 90% of the repairs that come into our shop. So it's really important to do this. Now, people say, I can descale. Well, you can descale with a chemical, run it through the machine, and if you descale it, what happens is the chemical reacts with the metal. It creates, uh, pulls some of the metal off. It eats up at gaskets. So 10 years ago, we were probably one of the largest sellers of descaling solutions in the country. Now we're probably at the bottom of the list because we've changed our philosophy from going from descaling to more preventative, not allowing the lime scale to build up. And that's really key. And we have customers who do this, and they have very, very few problems. Now, in certain cases where you do get hardness and you have to correct the problem, then you're going to have to descale. But we want to minimize that. Now, this is not 100% foolproof. You may still get some calcium magnesium passing through, but it really reduces it a lot. And that's why Lelite includes it, because they don't want to have problems surrounding their machine. I hear you. They minimize it 90%. Hard water kind of ruins all okay. the machines. Okay, so uh, when you get the machine, the uh, we're gonna run. I'm gonna go quickly run this in the sink with some water just to fill it up with water. You don't want to install it in the machine dry because you can actually create a suction 
that water will not get pulled. So we do want to wet this first. Okay, so just hold on. So I put ran some water through here, uh, through the larger side, and I got all the water coming out through this side, but we wanted to fill this. Now to install this, and if you're plumbing, not plumbing the machine, and using as a water tank, there's a mechanism in here that you can see we need to get this filter in. So I'm gonna go into the tank, and this whole assembly comes out. Did you see that? Oh. See that magic trick I did? I saw that. You know, right, right before, before your eyes. Right before my eyes, yes. thank you. Okay, now, if you're not using the softener and you have like say a whole house water softener and you know that your, your water is very soft and you don't want to use a filter, that's okay as well. But, so you can operate the machine without the filter, but to use the filter, this hose, if you look here, there's a particle filter. That's the hose that you're disconnecting. We're gonna pull this hose off, okay? Mm -hmm. We're gonna install this hose. And as the machine ages a little bit, this will be easier to take on and off because it'll take the shape of this larger Yes, the intake. older we get, the stretchier everything gets. Exactly. <laughs> so unfortunate. Okay, and then we're gonna insert this here like this. Okay, we can leave a little space on the bottom. And then we're going to try to, the front cover is up. This portion right here needs to sit into where the porthole is on the on the uh, bottom. Right. So there's a spring mechanism here, so when you take the tank out, it creates a seal. When the tank goes in, this pushes up and allows water to come right. through. So we'll insert this. And this is a very, very good design that no one else has. And now we have... And look, even Jim's big man hands went right in there. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to fill up. The reservoir. So there is a max line that's on the tank as well. So I'm going to insert this. You can fill it while it's in the machine. And just to let you know what makes this machine a lot different than every other double boiler espresso home cappuccino machine out in the market today. The reservoir is on the outside of the machine. And a lot of machines where the reservoir is inside, if you put your finger in the water, you feel it heated. So like this, the room temperature water is always room temperature, which makes it better because it, if your machine is heating up for about an hour and the temperature of the water that's coming into the machine is gonna be different than if your machine was on for four hours. It's gonna get a lot hotter. So this maintains the stability of the machine because the water's at room temperature. Now, if you have the machine outside in Alaska at 15 degrees and you're and also in Florida where it's 90 degrees, then you're gonna have a difference. But in general, in your home environment, that's that's gonna be yeah, the difference. Yeah, our other machine right had the water inside. Right, and the water tends to get hot. So this, you allow it to keep it on the, on the outside. The power button's right here in the front. Okay. Got it. What I'm, the other nice thing about this machine is you could, even with the bottomless portafilter here, and I'll show you the bottomless portafilter later, mm -hmm. it's also called a naked portafilter. Oh, stop! <laughs> so, but I refer to bottomless, okay, so, but you can call it naked. You can actually squeeze if it in a little bit. it's naked and bottomless. Naked and bottomless, yeah, that's Then a, it's an X-rated machine. Now yes, we're in a whole other the, category. We're in a whole other category. Here, so. so we're gonna power on by hitting the power button. It's gonna go through a sequence menu right there. Now you see this has like a little up arrow and a, like a lever in the front. I see. What that means, and this is a, a startup procedure for the machine. Now customers who've been getting the machine in the past month, they're not gonna see this because we actually wanna test every unit with water uh, before it goes to someone's home or office or commercial facility. And just like in your case, we wanna make sure everything is great uh, because it is a brand new model. So we do test every single one, but in the future, since the reliability has been very good, uh, we're not, um, we might stop testing, especially in the winter time with freezing temperatures, we may not as test. So you might have to go through this procedure, but don't be alarmed if you don't have to go through the procedure because you could always we've done call. a test. You can always we'll, call, we'll, yes. we'll tell you what to do. Okay, so this means lifting the lever up. At the same time, you wanna move this paddle all the way to the open position, which is the right side. Okay, so, now the machine is grabbing the water from the reservoir mm -hmm. and filling up the coffee boiler. 
Okay, so the first stage is filling up the coffee boiler. Which is on that side. Yes. Look, I remembered something. So now we have some water coming out. There is a countdown that happens. That looks like the shower head that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and now it magically stopped. What is it saying on the screen? Bring the lever back down. Yep. And now it automatically takes the water and is filling the steam boiler. 14. 14, 14 degrees? Right now it's 14 degrees. Now you should hear the steam boiler fill immediately after uh, you stop the coffee boiler filling. Okay, uh, so this procedure fills up both boilers to make sure there's water inside. Now, what happens if you don't have water inside? You actually can burn up the heating elements inside the boilers. So it's imperative to run water through the machine, and this is kind of any machine, but this has an automatic feature to fill the boilers, uh, especially both boilers. Most double boiler machines don't have that auto fill feature on the coffee boiler. They so do for the you steam. Go up and down, and right. Then you're so now it's stopped. Okay, uh, sometimes if you don't fill the tank to the very max, you may have to refill it, okay? And you'll get a symbol here that says refill the water tank. And if that happens, fill the water, take the water tank out, refill it, turn the machine off, and then turn it back on so it continues to oh, fill. Okay. All right. okay, so now that the machine is heating, we're gonna move on. Do you have to turn it off before you take the tank out? No, you could take it out uh, while it's on, but you should turn it off to reset the machine. Now, some customers like to fill uh, the water reservoir uh, while it's in here, and that's okay because oh, the reservoir, yeah, it's pretty empty. It mm -hmm. takes up pretty mm -hmm. much a lot of water out. Um, what's better that the water tank's on the outside, less chance of spillage of overfilling and getting into the machine. If you overfill this, it's gonna come out of the bottom over here, so that's a better feature than a lot of other machines. Oh, yeah. So these little things that Lalit uh, uh, taught about. How thoughtful. Yes, yes. So I'm gonna just take this cup, I'm gonna fill a little more water in the See, reservoir. See, all you Susie homemakers, this is good stuff. This is just, remember, you can always just get a rag, wipe it up. You got lazy, Jim? You're not taking this out and taking it over I, there? I don't want to reset the machine without water, so that's why I'm filling it from, from the outside. Sorry, we have to bust chops here. Because are you why from, am I here? Are, are you from New York? I'm actually from Detroit, but I live in you, Jersey now. Oh but my boy. mother's from New York, so. Oh, I thought I heard I, a New York I ha accent. I have an little... accent by way I of osmosis. I, I osmosis? Yeah, my mom just kind of instilled it. Ah. So let's get over to the accessory box. Yes, let's. Side? You have your instruction manual. No, you have okay. it. Yeah, actually, I do have it. <laughs> uh, inside, uh, you have many, many pages to read. Uh, I see that. You can, we'll be having coffee in 19, uh, uh, 19 days. 19 days, yes. Uh, there is, so there is English, uh, you want some Italiano, you want to brush up on your Italiano, you can read I'll here. I'll have my husband read that section. Uh, It'll sound very romantic while he reads it to me. <laughs> I won't know what he's saying, but I never do. So. Here you have your direct plumb hose. It's made in stainless steel, so that's why I asked you if you're using a tank did or plumbing. Did this come it off in. of my sink? Cause, yeah, it did. Uh, yeah. I, I took it off last night. Uh, this goes on the bottom machine. See how it's an elbow like ah, that? This gets connected on the, right on, the, on the bottom. Perfect actually goes this way uh, there's a fitting here and also a gasket so they put an extra fitting to uh, plumb it in now if you're gonna plumb it in the water ain't going through the reservoir right but we're not we're not but if you plumb it in you should contact us for a water treatment system especially if you don't have a whole house water softener so make sure you don't lose this uh, hose right here just in case we get rich and decide to it, it, get a water softener and, and plumb our and, house and, and sure, plumb, it, why plumb not? it in your house now, on the bottom of the drip tray, if you want to scoot doodle on this side over here, you'll see a nut inside the middle there, right? I do. Okay. To remove the drip tray, it does need a little angle out to pull out, and there's a catch basin underneath. That drain hose, the plastic one, connects to this uh, uh, catch basin. So the water comes down through. Ah, so you don't have to empty it. For people right, if you don't... ever want to drain it. Right. But the nut is on there to drain it manually. Okay, another nice little feature that they did, see these little rubber grommets? They mm -hmm. put it on here to reduce the vibration of the machine. <laughs> okay, to put the drip tray back, bring it closer yeah. to the front. It's dripping, put and it back. Now, the, when the machine's heating up, there is a vacuum breaker valve, a very high quality vacuum breaker valve 
that they do uh, redirect the water that's exiting and the steam to the drip tray. We are going to see some steam here in a little bit as it's warming up. Uh, but it avoids having any water inside the machine because a lot of machines don't have that hose and what happens is water squirts on the inside. We don't like water inside the machine because there's electronics in there, there's wiring. So gotcha. we want to avoid that. So they, they install this here. There's a little steam that comes out. We will notice it, but it's kind of alarm clock. Hey, the machine's almost ready. So when you hear it, you know it's ready. And that's wow. usually just during warm up. Now, what, why do they put this vacuum breaker valve on the inside? It's a little valve with a, a, a gasket and a, and a weight. And what happens is when the machine cools, the steam boiler cools down and you have steam in there, it, it becomes like a vacuum. So to reduce the vacuum, you have to have a vacuum breaker valve. And machines that don't have that, the vacuum kind of, next time you turn the machine on, it thinks it has steam. You open the steam one, it goes poof. And then it goes to heat up because that when you open the steam one, that's when it, you broke the vacuum. So that's the purpose of that valve. And a lot of machines, it's not redirected to the hose, uh, through a hose to the drip tray. Sometimes it goes to back to a water tank, depending on the machine. But in a lot of cases, there's just water that bubbles. And you'll see machines that have lime scale or water marks on the inside. They avoided this. Well, I won't see them because I'm going to be using this machine. Exactly. Other people will see Exactly. Them. So that's the, uh, the drain hose to connect, okay? We put the measurements on our website. If you want to come back over here. Always. And I know, I know from your husband that you are meticulous, meticulous about cleaning. Like, there is not even a speck of dust in your Nowhere. house from what I hear. We know how meticulous you are. Yes, we know so that you like to keep this I machine. I need cleaning products. You have, you have a Look at microphone this. I can see that I need a facelift right in here. That's <laughs> fabulous. Let me polish that up a little more. Actually, this I'll let get dirty so I look better. <laughs> Uh, don't use any abrasive cleaners. You could just use the cleaner uh, to gently rub. Uh, also, a terry cloth, if you lose this, uh, could be slightly moistened with water, uh, soft water, okay? Not hard water with limescale minerals. Well, but hard water, water is hard water, so okay, we're gonna have so to buy a bottle of soft water to clean the machine. So you have this nice cleaning cloth provided by Lalit. Very nice. In here, feel how heavy this is. Must I? Oh, that is. It is kind of heavy, right? Yeah. Guess what that's for? Uh, I, no. No, it's not a necktie. Okay. I don't okay. know. I see. I see this, so it must go into something. So this. Aha! It's a handle. What did I know? It's a handle and a water tank cover, and then again, you have the rubber grommets to reduce the noise while the machine is making espresso or operating. Here is the grate for the top. Great! So you can put your cups up here. You have your cleaning brush. We bought a machine from you guys many, many years ago. We're that's upgrading right. that, that's, to a... I know, yeah, I see you're upgrading. So you know what to do with the cleaning brush. I do. Basically to clean the coffees, mm -hmm. uh, grinds that build up in the group head gasket. It's good mm -hmm. to clean. Mm -hmm. I'll put this back here. <clears throat> now, I don't know why every manufacturer puts in this cheap plastic scoop. In case you want to go make a cup of Maxwell House. Oh, <laughs> that's it. Okay. Now I Which have Which is it. good to the last drop. I'm it's not being negative. Uh, inside here, uh, you have a steam tip that's on the wand, and you have a steam tip that's as an accessory. Uh, one steam tip is 1.5 millimeters, and I'm pretty sure that's the one on the machine, for greater amounts of steaming milk. Now, some customers only want to steam like two to four ounces. Then you want to put install the smaller hole tip. So this is for two to four ounces. This and that's is for, for six and up. And then basically you can take the wand and you can unscrew it. Okay. There's a little gasket that's included on both. And in there you can feel like there's a little tug. See that little uh, yeah, yeah. Teflon yeah, tube? I do. That's for the insulation. But you would just take it off and then insert back in. And there's an actual O-ring that's on the inside uh, to, to create a good seal with the Teflon tube. We're going to keep this one on here. So that just comes right off of the tube, and the tube stays there. And, and tightness is hand, right. Okay, gotcha. So for smaller amounts, you know, this was a surprise when the machines came in because the prototype didn't have this. And we were actually quite satisfied with the prototype machine, but they included this, which was a nice feature. I'm going to put this in here so we don't lose it. It's for little baby steams. And this is your naked porta filter. Stop. Naked. <laughs> okay. Why is Dress it? Dress that puppy. Why is it? Hold that. Why is it naked? When I take the cardboard tabs off of this one, if you look. This is not naked. See the metal on the bottom? I do. This is known as the spout. 
big drip. Right. <clears throat> Another nice feature by Lalit discovered about a year or two years ago. If you put this down, you see how the top is level? Mm hmm Okay. If you, on other machines, it's usually like on an angle. And when I show you tamping later, you mm -hmm. end up tamping on an angle. With this being straight, you're going to tamp better. Now, this one doesn't have anything, but this one you can put to the edge of the counter and make it level. Right. <clears throat> okay. So does that make sense? It does. Well, I'm going to lock this up. one in. So while the machine's heating, so feel how hot the group head is, it's getting pretty hot, right? It is. So the handle has to be hot too. I watched so, the lovely video with the chocolatey, creamy pour coming out. Oh, nice, fabulous. nice. In addition, inside the box is your blind for back flushing. Do you ever back flush your first machine? Uh, yeah, I think uh, my husband. So there's did no over. holes in here. You you did that, didn't you? <laughs> so there's back flushing a disc in here, or a filter basket. And then there's also a two cup basket. Now, a lot of people have the biggest challenge. Try to get this basket out of here. Out of here? And, and I don't want you to break your nails because it's kind of difficult, right? Yeah. It's not coming out easy. No. Little trick of the trade. You get another basket, either this one or this one. See the little lip right here? Mm hmm Okay. You take your other basket opposite side and you put it in between uh -huh. and pop it right out. What's holding the basket is the porta filter spring. See the spring in here? Yep. And then you put this one in, okay? Put the two cup, and you hear the snap? Okay. Nice. If you have a hard time putting it in because the spring is too thick. I'm waiting for the crackle pop. But... Crackle pop, yes. You turn it upside down and you press, and that'll pop the basket in as well. So, little tricks of the trade on how to get the basket in and out. Again, like this. If it doesn't come out easily, Okay, put it back in. You're having a difficult time. You can't get it in all the way because the spring is too thick. You could turn it upside down. So another little trick of the trade. In here, we have a platform that- it's for little pieces of toast. You could use it for that. Okay, this goes in the front. And the steam boiler is just about ready. See the steam coming out mm -hmm. uh, and some water dripping. The vacuum breaker is just about to seal. Uh, back in here, the last item in the accessory box is a tamper. Aha! We don't know where ours is. Since okay. we moved, everything's packed. Really? So now you hear the, the on the machine? I that did? means it's sealed up now oh, on the okay. steam boiler. Feel how heavy this is. This was another wow. surprise. That and if you don't know what he's talking about, it's a fabulous paperweight. So don't worry. <laughs> Very expensive paperweight. <laughs> sure, but this, this was actually a surprise for us to include a quality heavy tamper. The weight is important. Do you know why? Well, yeah, for the pressure on the... Uh, exactly. The so it levelizes the pressure. All right, so uh, we're almost ready to go with espresso. So in, uh, we'll be making some and espresso. I'm just going to add this for everybody. So people that are not baristas, people like me that are just drinkers of coffee, don't get scared of all of this because I figured out how to use my old machine. Think about standing in line at the coffee shop. Think about the money that you're spending. Think about ordering for 10 minutes and not getting your coffee and $300 a month for a non fat, skinny, soy, caramel, whatever, okay. macchiato can with you, a grande, can, whatever. What beverage was that? The, I don't know. <laughs> whatever it is, you got to wait till they call your name. You have to go, it's, you know, I, and I, then you got to serve yourself and clean up. It's a nightmare. You know where the best place I get my coffee from? Home. Home. That's what I'm exactly. saying. That's what I'm when saying. When you go out to eat, and it's you know what? so difficult. You can do it in your pajamas, and they don't allow that in the coffee shops. And if you don't own pajamas? You don't need them. <laughs> but you got to be careful of the steam. So. Yeah, you got to be careful of the steam. Exactly. Exactly.